abstract beads and brooches. How do we make this? Let's find out. Hey, it's Pam Duffy and it's a Thursday so it's another needle felting tutorial and right now we're in the middle of our series of makes we can make with the white world of wool beginners needle felting kit. So if you like videos like these don't forget to come back every Thursday. So the world of wool white needle felting beginners kit came with a nice range of colours that just to me screamed abstract beads or brooches so I thought I'd give it a go. So I'm trying to use what we're given in the kit to make us little tutorials. As you'll see in the b-roll I did attempt to use the needle they gave us but it is far too stabby, it's too rough, it would have taken forever so I just went back to my normal 38 twist needle to get the felting done. So firstly I made this bead ball and if you haven't already I go into more detail on how to make a ball in my how to needle felt a ball tutorial. This is a great way to get started with needle felting and it gives a really cute final product in a, I call it serendipity because you have no way of really controlling 100% how the outcome's going to be. It just a series of lucky accidents and it ends up as a reasonably pleasing ball or bead. And if you want to use this as a bead the fantastic thing with needle felting is it is just a fabric you've made so a needle with wool or thread or anything can go through it, you can sew it onto a piece of leather, you could attach jump hoops, I have a video for how to attach jump hoops to your pieces and you can make this kind of feature bead. And then to finish off a necklace using the same technique I would use single colours of the wool to make smaller beads and then that would make a really attractive, fun piece of jewellery. So let's have a look how I made this. Okay, so what I'm doing is randomly pulling off strips of the colour. I'm not measuring anything, just enough to make a reasonable sized ball about similar sized strips of colour, but as I see fit. So there's slightly more of the lighter purple and slightly more pink for no reason at all. And I'm just pulling them apart and restacking them to mix slightly, just doing that a couple of times, mainly just so that we have rather smaller bunches of colours. And then I'm drafting it out slightly to make a longer piece, twisting together and rolling into a ball. So this way I've got quite a random selection of colours, how they're all together. And I'm trying here with the needle that World of Wool provided in the kit. But seriously, it just seems to deform the piece without felting it at all. So, nope, we're going back to my needle that I like. But I am using the needle holder from the kit, which I'm really enjoying. And it's just a case of stabbing all over until the ball starts to take shape. And as you can see, once it's finally in a nice smooth shape, there's still areas where the twists came together and it's, it's making a slight they're not felted together enough so I'm just running the needle perpendicular to close up any kind of gaps and just felt 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 until it's nice and smooth and really that is all there is to it with with a bead just felt until you're happy with the level of felting that you've got and there you have it a lovely randomly colored ball and then for the brooch I thought I'd be a little more selective about where I put the colours and also I used a little bit of core wool. This is the carded white Coradale that I'm using in all my videos and this just gives an easier base to felt onto. The comb roving is a little harder to use, it takes a little bit longer to felt. If you use a core wool then it felts down quicker and then you're just using the more expensive fibres as a top dressing. And for the brooch, I'm just taking some of the white core wool and making it into basically a, a hemisphere, the same kind of shape that I'm using for the cat's paw bead. So if you haven't checked out that video, then I would go along there. But it's basically, it's going to be an oval shape with a flat bottom. So spending a bit of time concentrating on making the bottom flat by running my needle along it and squishing and manipulating the piece until I get this nice oval shape. And then I'm being a little more careful about where I place the colours, just putting strips of colour across the brooch so that it, it covers the whole of it and a little bit extra at the end. And then just adding more where I think I need a pop of colour. Just not really concerned too much about any kind of pattern, just going, oh, I fancy a bit more blue there. and just going with that. 
and then I'm just going to lightly tack the colours onto the oval that we've made. I'm not going all the way through, which is why I can actually just do it on the table, but just gently tacking the fibres in place. And at the minute, all I'm doing is making sure that every bit of white is covered. So that's the only moving that I'm deliberately doing of the fibres to cover any white gaps. But as you stab, they cover each other in different ways, so it makes a bit of an interesting pattern. And then just wrapping the ends round to the back to make sure that it's tacked on in the back and then felting all over it till it's covered. Now to use this brooch back that we got in the kit all I'm doing is opening it up and then taking a small amount of the white fleece and I'm just placing it across the brooch. Now the back of it has some holes in the underside as well so I'm felting along the side of the metal and then in the gap of where the holes are. Again, be careful here with your needle hitting metal. Just be nice and gentle with it and don't go all the way through to the other side else you'll have little pops of white come out that will look a bit messy. And then once it's tacked down the side, I'm just folding it over as, again so we've got sort of double thickness over the brooch, making sure it's felted firmly into the body of the piece and nice and smooth so that the brooch pin is still able to shut. So spend a bit of time on this. If it's a brooch, it's wanting to be worn, so you want it to be really quite nice and firm so it lasts longer. But there you go, that's all you need to do to make yourself a nice brooch. Okay, thank you so much for joining me. As I said, I'm making a series of felts inspired by the kit that I got and the colours in the kit. And stay tuned because the next couple of makes are kind of exciting. So if you like this, don't forget, come back every Thursday, click my wee face to subscribe and thank you so much for joining me.